Hi, this is Saul. I'm the uh, the director of Sky Academy, and in this episode, I know we've done a few of them, but this is going to be the final summary of sequences and series, okay? Because it also include includes series applications. All right, series application problems. Now, in in um, a couple of episodes ago, we did a summary of the theory of sequences and series. Remember that? Okay, so that's basically what I have up here. So we have um, all the formula for finding the general term, the general sum of a series, um, tests for finding the mean, uh, the, the geometric and arithmetic mean of um, between two terms. Yep. And we've got the test for how to test whether um, three uh, you know, three terms are in um, arithmetic or geometric progression. And then finally, uh, you know, in the episode that we did on uh, limiting sum, we worked out that for a geometric series, um, you can have a geometric, a limiting sum, um, which means that you can keep on adding forever and it'll turn out to be a set value. Number one, if it's not divergent. So in other words, divergent means it shoots off into infinity, either positive or negative. Um, and the conditions for, for it being not divergent, okay, the word being convergent, which is the opposite, is when the ratio, the common ratio, is between negative one and positive one. In other words, where the absolute value is less than one. And where you have that, and you have a sum that keeps on going to infinity, you, it, it converges to a limiting sum, or, uh, a limiting value, which is given by the formula a over one, a over one minus r. A being the first term, r being your common ratio, yeah? So yeah, so that is basically a general um, overview of sequences and series, all the theory, all the formula. I'm not gonna go into depth because there is another episode that does go into depth with that. But what I do wanna do is talk about some of the applications that we, that we, that we um, applied this theory to. So, in terms of arithmetic series applications, yeah, there, you will you will see um, problems like that. There'll be a few out there, and you should be able to recognise them. Do enough examples of problems that you can get that stuff done, and you can actually recognise that it's going to be an arithmetic progression that you need to apply, and therefore you need to use these formula here. And of course, the other thing that we, we did was worked out um, the application, or in other words, we applied um, the geometric series or geometric progression formula to a whole bunch of other situations, right? So there's four in particular that might be of use. We're not limited to four, but there might be four that are common that you'll see in the HSC, which are part of the syllabus, right? Um, one is recurring decimals. Yeah, and basically a recurring decimal is um, a geometric series because you've got um, each decimal place, each place value is basically going up by a common ratio of 10 or 0 0.1, okay, so which that's your common ratio. And, um, and your first term is basically your first digit in your recurring decimal and therefore, uh, you should be able to do recurring decimal type questions as a limiting sum, okay, as a limiting sum, all right? So we went through an example of that. The next thing that we did, and that actually helps us to, 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 to move from a recurring decimal to a fraction. The next thing that we did was apply geometric progression to finance, to money, right? And in particular, how banks operate and uh, we applied it to, for example, compound interest formula and compound interest situations. Annuities, which are basically like uh, an example of an annuity is superannuation, which you actually make regular contributions into an account that then also accumulates compound interest, yeah? And so we worked out what the final amount at the end is gonna be. So you might, and that's called the future value of the annuity, and you should be able to work out the future value of an annuity. You also need to be able to work out the present value of an annuity, which is um, what amount that you need to start with, 
all right? What lump sum do you need to start with to get that future value at the end if you're gonna start off with a lump sum instead of making regular contributions, right? Which is called your present value amount of your annuity, which um, basically comes down to equating the compound interest formula with the annuities formula, yeah? The other thing that you need to do work out is uh, work out time payment problems, yeah? Now, this can be a little bit tricky, right? In fact, the annuities and the time payment section uh, is oftentimes the worst done section. And not only that, uh, it's the place where people get tri get tripped up a lot. There's a lot. There's a p lot of potential for things to go wrong. All right, for little miscalculations to take take place. So yeah, you need to practice some of these questions. And typically, annuity time payment questions come at the end of the HSC paper simply because. Um, it, it, it is uh, a little bit trickier, okay? Now with time payment problems, basically what we're doing is we're working out how much your monthly repayment has to be, right? If we're paying down a reducible loan, right? We're paying down a loan that has an interest rate applied to it. So the interest rate is being applied to the reducing balance as you're making these time payments and you've got to work out how much that that repayment has to be in order to pay it off by a certain period of time, okay? So they're the type of questions that you'll find with, um, uh, with um, series applications, both arithmetic and geometric, yeah? So this is really important, this is the important bit. In order to be able to do this stuff, you need to be good at this stuff as well, okay? So I've included both in the final chapter summary, but let me stand to the side now so that you can take that all in. And I just want to thank you for watching and um, enjoy the next couple of chapters. Thank you. Bye.